Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a haul and in-depth sniff review of two candles from the Bridgerton Bath & Body Works Candle Company collaboration. But first, if you're new to Touch Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchfiretwice.com and also give me a follow over on Instagram, also at touch touch the fire twice. But for now, let's dig into these two candles. So there are five candles in this collection. Let's back up a second. So this is sort of, I think, a first for Bath & Body Works doing a true branded, marketed collaboration. Apparently there is potentially some sort of year-long deal with Netflix. Don't know if it is with Netflix overall or specifically Shondaland within Netflix, which I believe Shondaland, of course, the production company led by executive producer, creator, owner, director, writer, Shonda Rhimes of Grey's Anatomy fame, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, alongside many other popular shows over the years. Shondaland, I believe, now operates primarily exclusively within Netflix. So it'll be interesting to see what the other collaborations, if they do come to fruition, are for and with at Netflix within Shondaland or outside of that. But this is a big launch, a big marketed collaboration, which I'd say is interesting. Uh, collaborations, branded collaborations in general, across really almost any brand, especially things like fr fragrance, fine home fragrance, etc. It's a bit hit or miss. It's oftentimes kind of square peg and a round hole, making something fit with the primary driver being the marketing of it, the collaboration to increase the name recognition and market saturation of both brands being mutually beneficial to grow both brands or companies. And so it, I, I think for me, it's sometimes the primary purpose of the brand of why they do what they do can get lost along the way in there, though this seems to be fine. It's not like they're drastically partnering with something completely random, bringing this very popular show to Bath & Body Works and creating fragrances that align with it. I'd say as far as the demographic of Bath & Body Works, that demographic will also likely be the, the folks who are watching and, and heavily interested and invested in a show like Bridgerton on Netflix, which transparently I've not watched. I've heard primarily good things about it, uh, but I just haven't have not watched it up to this point. So within this launch, there are five candles within the Bridgerton collection of Bath & Body Works, and of course, many other additional Bridgerton themed products within the Bath & Body Works product offering when it comes to lotions and creams and mists and, and wallflowers and, and that whole thing. And within the Home Fragrance Candle Collection, there are five fragrances, four which are together and then one which kind of stands alone. I only purchased two of the five, but first the three that I did not purchase, the first one being the standalone Diamond of the Season with notes of Sparkling Peach, Spring Daffodil, and Radiant Jasmine. Two things, one, this was $32.95 retail. I purchased these during a buy one, get one candle sale. I wasn't interested in the fragrance itself and certainly not at $32.95. And of course for the buy one, get one, you have to get a candle of the same value for it to really be the best deal. And even then you're talking, it's gonna be like $16.50, which is not a great <laughs> price for a Bath & Body Works candle. And it just doesn't speak to me. It was a very traditional kind of body care floral at Bath & Body Works, not a fan of that. And it does frankly bother me across the board with this collection, the price points, because the standalone Diamond of the Season candle retails for $32.95. It does have the wraparound label. It does have a glass lid, which for many candles across the board now at Bath & Body Works, if they have any sort of decorative lid that is ceramic or composite or glass, it pops it to that $32.95 price point. But to me, that's just excessive. And their most standard price point at this point for their three-wick candles tends to be $26.95, though there are a fair amount of collections that come in at $24.95, which does feel appropriate, especially when you're gonna do a 10 off sale, which is their common sale now, or the buy one, get one, or every once in a while, a $12.95 or $13.95 sale, decent. I don't get coupons from them any longer, so I'm never really able to stack a 20 or 25% off on top of that. And so it makes me a little bit less likely to spend, but hey, their loss, not so much my loss. And knowing that, the 30 295, not entirely surprising. What is surprising, however, is in the collection of four, where we have these two, as well as two others that I'll get into in just a moment, they are sort of the now standard Bath & Body Works aesthetic as far as a solid quality wraparound label, a lid that may or may not be standard. In this case, it is metal. It is special for this collection, but it's not an up-leveled ceramic or glass or glitter or whatever it might be sort of lid. So it's their traditional metal, which normally would make candles in a collection like this priced at $26.95. However, entirely just because of the Netflix Shondaland Bridgerton partnership, these are retailing at $29.95. I think that's pushing it. I think that's excessive. It doesn't make sense to me. It really is just them going on A, 
hoping that people will pay for it, the hype that Bridgerton fans will come in that are not Bath & Body Works fans and buy them because they're obsessed with the show and they want to make sure they're burning this candle when they're watching this episode where so-and-so is eating this or smelling this or walking through there, whatever it might be, however intensely they have the crossover. But for the standard Bath & Body Works purchaser fan, you know, candle fan, $29.95 for a candle that really should be at $26.95 Though frankly, in lesser packaging, could be $24.95. It's, start it's starting to really push the line. $5 more for a candle that, if it wasn't a wraparound label and had a traditional lid without this decoration on it, mm, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one for packaging. I can appreciate the aesthetic of different packaging, but not to make it worth $5 more. But it is what it is. I purchased them, you probably purchased them as well, and <laughs> they got our money, right? So, but I did purchase just the two of the four because the other two I just, even for review purposes, was not interested in. Very quickly though, the other two in this collection are Bridgerton Study with notes of smooth amber, oakwood, and dried orchids. Sort of a, again, I, wouldn't, I don't wanna say entirely traditional, nothing groundbreaking, nothing intoxicating, or oh my gosh, this is incredible, or so sultry, or transportive to a mood, moment, memory, space, place, or time. Take it or leave it, it kind of falls in line with many of the other similarly built fragrances at Bath & Body Works. And the floral in the collection being Wisteria Garden, with notes of sweet rosewood, English rain, and lemon petals. <laughs> I love the idea of English rain. Very specifically, only the rainfall that falls in England here, but it's whatever. The, we know the adjectives they use 90% of the time are just to make you want to buy the candle, frankly. Anyhow, getting into the two that I purchased, one of them I enjoy a fair amount, the other I'm not super sold on. We'll start with one I don't love first, actually, and that is the Danbury Shortbread. Again, just getting into the aesthetics of this, so it is that wraparound label. This is embossed, so it's a, a, a high quality when it comes to Bath & Body Works as far as the label, the branding. You have some gold foil there on the design, this gold lid pressed with this design as well. So it's, you know, standard, it's nice, but should be $26.95. Notes on Danbury shortbread, whipped vanilla, almonds, and sugar crystals. And based on the name, they're telling a shortbread. So shortbread is that buttery cookie that just melts in your mouth, crumbly, very sweet, mild, tender cookie, oftentimes eaten with tea, where it is that primarily butter flavor that just kind of melts in your mouth. Think, you know, the, the tree foils from Girl Scout cookies, if you're not familiar with a, a traditional shortbread. Getting my nose on it. Um. I can see where a lot of people may love this. I tend to love almond fragrances, whether they are more conceptual almond, like an almond flower or something that is cozy and, and warm, or something that is actually a bit more gourmand, bakery, truly edible. Um, there was a, a Mary Madeline cookie a few years back. When it comes to almond bakeries, Bath & Works, it's fairly hit or miss for me. They've, they've had a few that I've enjoyed, but a lot of times they just get too heavy, too frankly artificial, or the almond note is good, but the bakery note is just kind of flat or vice versa. With this one, it's quite strong. I burned this, I think, once. Um, I will say this was a room filler and it was the kind of candle not unlike Paris Cafe or, you know, sometimes Summer Boardwalk, back in the day, salty caramel, where you light it, it goes throughout your space, and then you blow it out, you leave, you come back two hours later, and it stills in the air. And for me, something like this that is, it's not a particularly fresh, refreshing, just like light sweet bakery, like a bake shop. It is so buttery. That is a scent that I don't really need hanging around my space. So in that sense, I was not a big fan of it as far as the way that it stuck around. Truly though, I know a lot of folks didn't love the, was it Almond Croissant that came out this springtime as well. I smelled it in store, didn't really enjoy it, didn't purchase it. Also, frankly, based on some of the reviews I had heard. This, I believe people are enjoying more of it for me. There's something about it I don't like, and I don't know if it is just too heavily buttery, but buttery in a, let's call it artificial way. I mean, obviously, <laughs> butter scent is never going to be true, you know, there's essential oil of, of butter, of the fat from, you know, cow's milk, but it's like a sweet butter. There is certainly, you wanna call it shortbread. I do think shortbread is probably fairly accurate for the type of baked good. You know, sometimes we see pancake, muffin, scone, cupcake, pound cake, angel food cake, cookie, dough, Danish, donut, bread, all interchangeable with just a generic bakery. There's some genericness to the baked side of this, but that butter really does make it seem like that kind of crumbly, soft shortbread cookie. So I think that's authentic, but it's just they have the the butter and like the sweetness turned up just too much for me where it leans into cloying and the artificiality, which of course these fragrance notes are synthetic, fine, but 
it's amped up so strong that to me, it, rather than it being this medium sort of light fragrance that could make something that's synthetic feel more authentic, it is turned up and it's just kind of blasting. And in that sense, it's like, okay, well, this is now the artificiality and the synthetic side of it is obvious, which makes it less enjoyable, if that makes sense, because it becomes less authentic because a true shortbread wouldn't smell that strong. A shortbread cookie is not gonna have a strong scent. Maybe when you're baking it a little bit, but it's not gonna be this like, this smells like shortbread flavoring <laughs> that you put into a candy or something, that really intense synthetic version of the fragrance. And the almond is there. It's a sweet, strong, you know, not quite, I'd say sort of almond extract, almost leaning towards like a sweet, sugary, crunchy marzipan. Crunchy meaning sugar crystals, because marzipan is just almonds made into a paste with sugar um, that can be rolled out or made into little candies and things like that, almost like a fondant. And so it does have a bit of that aspect to it, but it doesn't feel light. It doesn't feel delicate the way that shortbread and frankly, any bakery item should feel kind of delicate in a, in a candle and in home fragrance. And so for me, the intensity, the, the cloyingness and the way that this sticks around and hangs around and just feels so synthetic because it's a sort of fantasy idea of what this smells like in the real world interpretation of that versus an authentic true to life interpretation of the fragrance of what a shortbread cookie with some almond extract or ideally actually some some crushed almonds perhaps in the in the dough would smell like this is is just too much for me and so i'm not a fan of this in fact i hate to burn in return uh, i tend to if i'll buy something and then if i smell it before i burn it and i don't like it i may exchange it but I, I try not to return unless it's something that I enjoy and there was just terrible performance and it, it didn't burp, pull out or something. But with this, the one burn, I may exchange it because I just, I don't want, I don't want the smell in the air. There's, there's something almost a, like a citrus or something in the background, though not quite, not like my beloved Mary Madeline cookie, which was uh, like a tangerine cake uh, repackaged from like 2011, came out in 2020 or 2021 in, in the holidays. Love that. This um, uh, kind of reminds me aspects of that, but frankly, this this reminds me a bit of Goose Creek candles when I was sent their Hocus Pocus 2 collection back in 2022. Uh, I did a review. You can check it out here if you want. Transparently, it wasn't a very good review. I didn't enjoy the fragrances or the performance on those candles, just being honest. But there was something artificial and intense about all of those fragrances that this reminds me of those in a way where it's just cloyingly sugary, sweet, again, butter, generic almost, not a lot of nuance, to where when I smelled this, I was like, oh man, if I still had those, this feels like it would be kind of in line with those, which I wasn't a fan of. So yeah, I don't know. I was a little bit bummed because I can appreciate, uh, you know, I know I'm not so like hoity-toity that I, you know, don't like bakery like, like some reviewers or fine fragrance collectors can be uh, in the luxury world. I can get down with something delicious, but, this is not it for me. And then we move on to the one that I actually do <laughs> like the most, which is Queen Charlotte's Tea with notes of rich bergamot, bold citrus, and black tea leaves. This one I did burn two or three times. It gets a very deep pool, burns quite well, burns a little bit hot, but a solid traditional Bath & Butter burner as you've come to expect. I would say going into this based on bergamot citrus, which bergamot is a citrus, so kind of feel like they threw the citrus note in there, not because there's also lemon in it, but probably just because they assume a lot of people don't really know that bergamot is just a citrus fruit, as well as black tea leaves. I thought this would be more like your London Calling, your Southern Sweet Tea, uh, some of the tea lemonade combinations they've had over the years, that kind of typically more iced tea, sugar sweet crystal, kind of like Lipton Brisk canned nest tea, powdered tea, whatever. Again, a little artificial, but still that very sweet lemon black tea sugar fragrance that is well known in home fragrance and, and candles. But that's not what this is. In fact, for me, though I do get tea in here, this is a bit out of wrongly marketed because for me, this is more of a conceptual tea fragrance versus, you know, Queen Charlotte actually sipping her tea with her shortbread. But getting my nose on it, it is so refreshing. Tea, it could be refreshing, certainly iced tea, a hot tea, I don't know if I'd ever call it refreshing. Soothing, rejuvenating, 
potentially invigorating if it's got a, a good enough caffeine content to it. Earl Grey really is what they're talking about here because Earl Grey is black tea leaves that is infused with bergamot. So black tea leaves, bergamot, bold citrus. Okay, the bold citrus just frankly is what the bergamot is, unless there's also maybe a bit of lemon or something in here. But really this is Earl Grey tea is what they're going after here. They don't mention sugar, which this isn't as sugary as your London Callings, as your traditional iced tea fragrances. But where this is different, is the tea leaves, I suppose I would have, I would have almost maybe called them like white tea leaves because they're a bit delicate, a bit lighter. There's some of that tannic astringency that black tea leaves do bring, which are, they're all the same tea leaves, it's just white tea leaves are picked very young, green tea leaves are also young, but they're allowed to oxidize a bit more, whereas your black tea is fully oxidized, mature tea leaves. And I'll just get, I'll jump to the headline. This is more of a spa-like tea fragrance for me. So think your white tea and sage. Think white tea and ginger, which has not been back for many years, but I love that fragrance. Um, they also actually have that year or two ago as one of their early 2000s body care fragrances of Bath & Buttocks, white tea and ginger body wash. And I bought probably five or six of them when they were two or three dollars. I love that one. This is very similar to that, in fact. It's got that sense of tea in the air or in the scrub or wherever it might be, but not so much that you're drinking it. It's not so far off, but there's almost, I would say, that citrus, they say bold citrus. I would actually say that, I don't know that it would be bold citrus fruit or zest or juice. I almost would think that there's a bold citrus floral in here. So I think that maybe we've got that bergamot, which bergamot kind of looks like a knobbly lime, and it has a bit of that peppy, bright zippiness of a lime, but they say it's uplifting and airy and brings a sort of sparkling aspect sometimes of fragrances. Not full in effervescence, but a, a sparkling note. So certainly that's the bergamot, but the citrus, I feel like is probably almost like a, a very fine lemon blossom or yuzu blossom, something a little bit more of a, a petal um, because there's borderline floral to this, which for drinking, I mean, you certainly can have, you know, jasmine and, and things like that that are, that are in tea. And that's, that's not uncommon. But for a traditional, you know, bergamot, citrus, black tea, you wouldn't expect there to be a floral in this. However, I do get a, a bit of that. It's complex. It feels, it reads, smells more a body fragrance or fine fragrance, but not a direct port true to life beverage or consumable edible but this smells of tea, this smells of citrus, not a cup of tea that you're drinking as or with Queen Charlotte. I really like it from the spa therapeutic aromatherapy aspect. I find tea fragrances to be really soothing. I've often said if I were ever to make my own collection of candles, uh, if it was supposed to be a cohesive collection of sort of one fragrance family, it would be tea because there would be black tea, there would be oolong, there would be some matcha, there would be deeper, darker, warming scents, there would be some light, bright, floral aspects of tea. There's so many ways you could go with tea and, and many would lean in that sort of spa, aromatherapeutic, rejuvenating, invigorating, grounding fragrance families. And this is where that sits for me. So I really enjoy it, but being marketed as drinkable tea, it's like the white tea and sage that we all know that comes out in the neutrals collection and in hand soaps. Though you can drink tea and eat sage, they don't really market that so much as an edible or consumable. It's more so the aromatherapeutic, relaxing properties of those fragrances themselves versus eating them, ingesting them. And that's what this is for me. Really do enjoy it. It's nice. It's kind of straightforward. Comparing it to white tea and sage, not that different. White tea and ginger, not that different. Prefer white tea and ginger to that. White tea and sage, probably about similar to me for this. I almost appreciate that it's not quite as heavy uh, or kind of that muskiness that you get from, from the herbal sage. Though a little bit of an herb in here wouldn't be unwelcomed. It is for that bright, sparkling citrus from the bergamot. And again, I'm gonna call a citrus flower, light citrus flower in here as well with those black tea leaves and a bit of sugar. So interesting, I'll burn through it. Probably don't need to buy it again because it's nice, but is what it is. So that is my in-depth sniff review of the two Queen Charlotte's Tea and Danbury Shortbread with the Bridgerton Bath and Works Candle Collection. Let me know what you think of these, if you purchased them, if you purchased the other ones. Love, hate, somewhere in between. Love to hear your thoughts, and until next time, take care.